Dear students, welcome back to the online lecture series on cell structure and dynamics. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss a topic on biogenesis of chloroplast. First, what is mean by biogenesis means creation of cell and cellular organelles that is called biogenesis. Uh, certain cellular organelles like chloroplast, mitochondria, which are all called as semi-autonomous organelle. So these organelles are considered that they are non-native to the eukaryotic organism. Say for example, the, all the photosynthetic organisms. So all the photosynthetic organisms are containing mitochondria and chloroplast, which are all non-native to the photosynthetic organism. That was a statement which is discussed under the topic called semi-autonomous organelle or uh, endosymbiotic theory. So this slide that talks about the types of plastids. So in photosynthetic organisms, uh, it may be a plant or alga. There are three different types of plastids are there. So according to Schimper, uh, in the year of 1885, he classified the plastid into three categories. One is leucoplast, second one is chromoplast, third one is chloroplast. Leucoplast means which is white appearance structure, uh, which is a living part of the cell uh, which can be found in the underground uh, ground of the plant so whatever the plant part which are all present in the underground say for example tuber root rhizome so all these are containing leucoplast so leucoplast which is further categorized into three category which is called as amyloplast alloplast proteinoplast so amyloplast means which containing starch molecule so the plastid which which is filled with the starch molecules are called as amyloplast alloplast which is filled with the fat molecules say for example oil content uh, groundnut so these kind of uh, seeds endosperms which are all containing uh, alloplast which because it is it is having rich in fat molecule or oil content and third one is proteinoplast which means protein containing plastids are called as proteinoplast the second category is called chromoplast so chromo means color uh, the colored part of the plant say for example uh, flowers so different uh, colored flowers are there no in the environment and fruits so fruits are different colors are there vegetables right so all these colored part of plant are containing a plastic called chromoplast so that color differences found in the different species are uh, controlled by this kind of chromoplast the third one is chloroplast which is very very important for the synthesis of food molecules of any kind of photosynthetic organism so chloroplast means which found in the green part of the plant so which wherever the plants are containing the green area leaf stem node internode uh, epical meristem whatever all the green area of the plant containing chloroplast which are all involved in photosynthetic process because other plastids are lack of chlorophyll pigment so this chloroplast containing the pigment called chlorophyll a and b so which are all responsible for uh, for entrapping or uh, absorbing the sunlight at particular wavelength so that sunlight and water molecules and carbon dioxide all together in the presence of uh, chloroplast which is involved in the process called photosynthesis so this slide that talks about the original discovery of the conversion of alloplast, chloroplast and chromoplast from the protoplastid. So here you can see the protoplastid. So this protoplastid can be converted into etioplast or sometimes chromoplast or sometimes chromoplast or chloroplast or amyloplast so according to the protoplastid this protoplastid have the capacity to convert itself into any kind of plastid so this is what uh, discovered by Schimper and uh, he uh, given the uh, confirmation of how 
the cycle of chloroplast and chromoplast leucoplast conversion takes place inside the photosynthetic organism according to the uh, requirement of the chloroplast or leucoplast the cycle will takes place in the photosynthetic cells this slide talks about the historical event of chloroplast so chloroplast was very first it was discovered in the 17th century by Nehemiah Grew and Anton von Leeuwenhoek. The term plastid was used by Skimper in the year of 1885 and he also classified the plastid of plant. So that was we have seen in the previous slide. And Mayer's skins and Schimper showed that chloroplast always rise from pre-existing chloroplast. This is, a, this is very very important topic. Uh, just underline it. Okay. Um, the chloroplast always arise from pre-existing chloroplast right okay so similar to the microorganism bacteria so bacteria due to the fission process one bacteria cell divides into two bacteria so, so that kind of uh, uh, chloroplast division that takes place in the all the photosynthetic organism that was given by Mayer, Schemes and Skimper. Willstatter and Stoll isolated and characterized green pigments chlorophyll A and B from the chloroplast uh, the chlorophyll pigment were discovered and isolated and characterized by Willstatter and Stoll. Julius Sachs showed that chlorophyll is confined to chloroplast not distributed throughout the plant cell. And this slide talks about the distribution of the chloroplast. So the chloroplast remain distributed homogeneously in the cytoplasm of the plant cell. A particular plant cell will contain more than 20 types, 20 individuals of chloroplast. According to the cell located in the part of the plant, the number of chloroplast also that varies. But algae usually have a single huge chloroplast which is present in the center of the cell but other higher plants higher uh, eukaryotic plants uh, terrestrial plants or aquatic plants they contain 20 to 40 chloro 40 numbers of chloroplast per cell when the number of chloroplast is inadequate it is increased by division when excessive it is reduced by degeneration so whenever it is being uh, required the number of uh, uh, chloroplast already present in the cell will be enter into cellular division means a chloroplast division so more number of chloroplast will be produced in case more number of chloroplast are there which has to be reduced so some number of chloroplast will be degenerated so according to the degeneration process of the cell so this slide talks about the chloroplast as a semi autonomous organel so what is mean by semi autonomous organel so organ a cellular organel which can fulfill all the mechanism all the requirement say for example protein production enzyme production uh, carbohydrate whatever the molecule is required for the cell uh, for the organel which can be produced by itself so that is called a semi autonomous organel so in a in a, any kind of a cell a complete autonomous organel can be called as it is nucleus so nucleus can be called as semi uh, fully autom aut automated organel whereas the mitochondria and chloroplast are semi autonomous organel because uh, for some essential functions of mitochondria and chloroplast are dependent by the nuclear gene so the nuclear gene that will produce a particular proteins that proteins are translocated into the mitochondria and chloroplast so the complete uh, uh, functions of chloroplast and mitochondria can be fulfilled so this mitochondria this chloroplast is also containing dna ribos ribosomes and if dna is there it can convert the dna into rna that is called messenger rna so ultimately the messenger rna can be with the help of ribosomes it can produce uh, proteins right so protein synthesis can be possible inside the chloroplast but even though certain important proteins of chloroplast can be comes from the nuclear genome so here one important thing we have to note that the ribosomes which is present in the chloroplast is a 70s type it is very very similar to the bacterial ribosomes so 
this is this is a top this is a, a hint that uh, scientists are suggesting the chloroplast is non native to the photosynthetic organisms so it might be in the evolutionary process by accidentally uh, the photosynthetic alga or photosynthetic bacteria like blue green alga they might be entered into the prokaryote eukaryotic cells and then it it might be it, it becomes a part of the uh, eukaryotic cells in the subsequent uh, generations so like that scientists are uh, um argue arguing uh, for uh, that um, endosymbiotic theory concept so this slide talks about the chemical composition of chloroplast so this chloroplast uh, contains uh, the components of proteins lipids carbohydrates chlorophylls carotenoids and nucleic acid with a different uh, ratio so here all the requirement by the chloroplast can be fulfilled with the chemical constituents but even though the chloroplast is called a semi autonomous organelle because it is dependent on nuclear genome so this slide talks about the ultra structure of chloroplast so uh, the chloroplast contains an envelope so it is a double membrane organelle which is called as endomembrane organelle we can say and stroma is there thylakoid is there so in the next slide we will talk with the the structure so here you can see the chloroplast is covered with a double membrane layer one outer membrane is present and also inner membrane is present so inside of the inner membrane a matrix is there a matrix is a jelly like substance where the cellular components will float so inside the matrix a uh, proteinous soup will be there rna dna genetic material will be there and protein synthesis uh, machinery called ribosomes will be floating so all the cellular organelles will be floating in the matrix and essential enzymes involved in the protein synthesis also will be present in the matrix so inside the matrix granum will be there granum means it is a stack of uh, co coin like a uh, structure which is thylakoids thylakoids are arranged in a stack like manner so it forms a granum and lumen means which is present inside the granum the cross section if you take the granum which is inside the granum lumen structure is present so this this is about the chloroplast so coming back to the the our real topic that is biogenesis of chloroplast so the chloroplast never originates de novo so de novo means it is uh, starting from the scratch so uh, atoms are uh, aligned arranged and the molecule will be produced and molecules are arranged so that a component of a biomolecule will be produced and these biomolecules will combine together to form a organelle which is called as de novo process but in case of chloroplast the de novo concept never uses right so chloroplast can be produced in the photosynthetic organism only by multiply by fission process similar to the bacteria so bacteria divides uh, by fission process similar process or takes place in the chloroplast also in the photosynthetic organism so during the development of chloroplast the first structure to appear is the so called protoplastid as we discussed in the first slide recall the slides the protoplastid will be converted into chloroplast or chromoplast or leucoplast according to the requirement by the plant the protoplastid will be converted into any form of the plastid so protoplastid is then develops into chloroplast this slide talks about the symb symbiotic origin of chloroplast so we are discussing we are stretching more about the symbiotic concept that is a uh, mm, chloroplast and mitochondria are non native to, to the uh, eukaryotic organisms so chloroplast that divide grow and differentiate they contain circular dna ribosomal rna is present messenger rna is present they are able to produce proteins so all these uh, informations of chloroplast that are resembling the bacteria so by considering all these fact uh, the chloroplast was 
suggested that these are chloroplasts are non native to the photosynthetic organisms so they might be accidentally entered during the evolutionary course uh, into the higher eukaryotic organism by visualizing these similarities between microorganisms and chloroplast it has been suggested that chloroplast might have relationship between autotrophic microorganisms so this is what we have we are stretching from the first slide but some of the enzymes of chloroplast are coded by nuclear genes so there are still exist certain doubt about the symbiotic origin of chloroplast so these are called as semi autonomous organisms because of this paragraph in the last paragraph it mentions that uh, some important uh, enzymes and proteins are synthesized by nuclear genome which are all not present in the chloroplast right so the genes uh, informations are not present in the they are not origin origin to the chloroplast because but they are origin to the nuclear genome so these are all called as semi autonomous organelle so this concept uh, still it is in under doubt that they might not be a symbiotic origin right so both chloroplast is having both the kind of uh, confirmation that is a symbiotic and non symbiotic uh, origin so functions of chloroplast chloroplast is it is involving in photosynthesis and is producing the food molecules so it, in the both light reaction and dark reaction the chloroplast can produce food molecules